welcome to Turning Back the Clock. I don't know if you noticed in the newspaper that the rowing club finally has a home for their rowing shells at the old, uh, the boat, uh, the Lakeside Park bathhouse. That got me thinking about the history of rowing and I knew that from our sports history exhibition we had a good file on the history of rowing in the community and I, I thought today we'd do that. Got some good photographs to show you and a bit of the history. There's been rowing in Nelson since at least 1890. The newspaper has often talked about people out rowing on the lake and in the Dominion Day celebrations in 1892 they were having competitions and people were out practicing. Rowing of course had come with the English and Eastern Canadian and there was wide uh, people who had come here and there was a very wide interest in rowing in the community. By 1896 our rowers were traveling to Caslow for competitions so we weren't the only community interested in rowing and in that same year we built a boathouse because we had bought some of the new sliding seat skulls and uh, the man named Mr. Ingraham was commissioned to build them. They built a wharf as well there seemed to be a lot of community support in 1898 and that was the first year we see mention of ladies involved and we had lady coxswains in one of the races in that regatta. Well the local people were getting very good and better than the competition that was in the local area so they got very ambitious and they decided to join the North Pacific Association of Amateur Oarsmen which held a annual regatta at uh, various centers Portland, Seattle, Victoria, Vancouver. This was rather ambitious for Nelson because the skulls, which are very long as you know, had to be transported to the regatta if the regatta was to be held in the coastal city and of course it would be expensive for the competitors from the other cities to come to Nelson. But the interest was so keen that uh, by 1901 we had joined the NPAAO and we had also acquired new boats, extended our boathouse, and uh, were actually one of the more prominent members of that organization. And we hosted the regatta here in Nelson in 1902 at a cost which is pretty high for those days of $3,000. And crews from Vancouver, Victoria, and Portland came in. 1905, we sent our people to Victoria for rowing and Mr. Wheeler of Nelson was elected president of the organization. Uh, we also competed in other regattas away from Nelson and Roy Sharp, Archie Bishop, Harry Bishop and Frank Knott competed at the Portland Exhibition rowing races and brought home the Pacific Northwest Championship. 1906, our fours uh, did very well in the 1906 regatta which we hosted and in 1907 we won the junior fours at the 1907 regatta and there was a huge reception for those rowers when they came home. In 1908 we won the singles and double championships and started mixed fours races that year but we didn't bring home any silverware again. In 1911 we competed uh, in a regatta at our own town, but we don't seem to have traveled anymore. I understand that the CPR had carried our skulls for free in the, as a public service gesture in those early years, and I guess from 1910 onward they were tightening the belt a little and they refused to carry them and it, the cost was too much, so they couldn't compete. But we did go to Coeur d'Alene and our crews from there did very, very well in the regatta and brought home the, the uh, prizes. And they say that the uh, Cuscanook, uh, that they came home on, the, the uh, flags were flying and everyone knew that uh, the winners were on board. Well, the war got in the way of rowing, of course, for a while, and it wasn't until about 1922 that the rowing club got back into action. Uh, they did revive rowing really well though and they had by 1924 a great ladies team on the lake including Mrs. Guy Wright, 
Connie Martin, Eileen Gill, and Myriad Morris. And they went to the Kelowna Regatta for the Okanagan Lakes Championships and brought home second place from in both the men's and the women's events. In the 30s, uh, rowing had gone down a little, the interest was lagging a little, and a gentleman named Don Lucas, who had been a member of the Kelowna Rowing Club, came to Nelson, and he helped revive that club. And under his leadership, the club buildings were repaired, and at that time, it's quite interesting to hear what they had. They had two buildings, one consisting of a two-story building which had a large locker room, lockers, showers, and a toilet with cots and benches, the lower floor housed the boats with sliding doors opening out into the lake. And they had quite an extensive group of boats at that time. Two rows of lap strakes, three to a side, doubles on top so that the two men could handle them. And they had fours and singles and five shells and lots of oars and sweeps. So they really had good equipment. They had another building that was used for canoes and that was used for rentals and the money for that went to maintain the uh, equipment. In 1937, the club had gotten to the point where they wanted to compete again and they went to the 1937 Kelowna Regatta. At that regatta, Danny McKay, Art Godfrey, Al Bush and Bud Greenwood took the fourth championship and did very, very well. In 38, our Nelson team won the fourth. And in on the return visit when the Kelowna Club came here, our team won the doubles. So we were well back into it again. The Second World War came along, of course, and uh, no competitions were held during that time. But right after the war, under a, a group with Conway Rathergland and some other uh, former rowers got together and did uh, competitions at the Penticton Rega Regatta and they came second in the fours. Then tragedy struck. A sudden storm cut the boat lo house loose with violent winds and it was irreparably damaged to the point where the, the equipment was damaged as well. And the club was, there was just no money to rebuild and I suppose not even the interest. So the club met and authorized to loan the equipment to a club in the Okanagan. And they donated what funds they, they had left to the Nelson Ski Club. And rowing had to wait for a few years for a new revival. That came when Hank Baroni moved to Nelson. He was very interested in rowing. He knew we'd had a rowing club in the past and he knew that we had shells. And he went over to see them in the Okanagan but said that they were in, in, not good enough to bring back and no good. They really wanted to get rowing going and uh, through Hank's involvement, the, a member of the BC Rowing Association contacted him because they were looking for a place to hold the Pan American Games trials. They'd always been held in St. Catharines, Ontario. But they thought it would be good to bring them out west to give rowing an impetus. And it ended up that uh, if our river was under three miles per hour that we could have the trials here. Well, those of us our age or been here for a few years remember those seeing those eights on the river for the BC Festival of Sports in 1970 and then for the real Pan Am trials in 71. It was very exciting. And after that trials were over, two um, Two shells were left here by the Pan Am people. A big Julie, it was called, a four-horred shell and a single shell. And with that, we had some, some equipment. And Hank got very involved in promoting rowing. Uh, two crews of girls at the time were rounded up and a crew and a half of boys. And most people were about 15. Uh, some of those people, well known in sports from other situations in our town such as Sharon Best, Joanne and Pat Seeger uh, and Lori Seeger and uh, Ed Mannings and his sister Leah and uh, they rode and competed throughout the 70s and did very very well indeed. In 1973 a $10,000 grant came through from the sports and recreation branch of the government and construction of the new boathouse that, that is now in such sad condition was started. 
that grant was sanctioned by the BC Rowing Association. Well, those uh, rowers that I mentioned went to Shawnigan Lake and to Burnaby and they won their competitions and did very well. They, wrote, they worked really, really hard and kept going. Uh, in, the in the 80s, some of the uh, r people in town were talking about rowing again, but it wasn't until Dominique Prenet, the uh, French Olympic rower, came to Nelson that the real rowing started up again. And uh, we all have heard of how well the club has done at the BC Summer Games and at other competitions. Some of the really famous rowers that we've had in the community over the past years are Harry and Archie Bishop. And Harry and Archie, especially Archie, competed in many rowing competitions. Deb Debrisse, who took the Northwest Singles in 1895 and came to Nelson and served as coach and inspiration for rowing in Nelson for many, many years. Lauren Loomer, who graduated from Nelson High School and is our truly Olympic champion, who was admitted to the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame and to the BC Sports Hall of Fame for his Olympic victories in the UBC rowing group that won and did so well in, 19, in the 1956s. And Sharon Best, of course, who did very well in BC Summer Games and BC Rowing Championships and in doubles in the BC Rowing and Canadian National Rowing Championships and came second at the Henley Regatta in, uh, by missing a first at, in one one hundredth of a second in 1982. So I hope this gives you a little background of rowing in Nelson and you will see that it's had a long history and hopefully we'll see with our new boathouse and the new impetus in the club that there will be lots of new energy and lots of new awards and prizes and lots of fun and lots for us to watch on the lake. Thanks for listening. Television delivers more news, more information, and more entertainment than any other single media. Shaw Cable is one of the leaders in the Canadian cable industry. Based in Western Canada, it serves over 50 communities from coast to coast. Cable television systems like Shaw Cable are instrumental in the support and distribution of the networks which form our country's broadcasting system. Shaw Cable, a company dedicated to service the community and you.